Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And another video using one of my favorite wafer die sets, the etched layered daisy die sets. I have a playlist dedicated to that die set that will be linked at the end of this video on the end screen if you want to check it out for all the other videos I've done so far using it because it's just one I reach for. In fact, it's one I reach for so often that when it was on sale some time ago, I purchased a second one. <laughs> so I have two sets of the wafer dies so I can do like faster die cutting. That's the only reason I did that. So anywho, I made this card for this week's color throwdown challenge. Again, for those that are new, the color throwdown challenge, it's just a weekly challenge. I will have a link to it in my blog post that's linked directly below the video. And it's a new one every week. Anyone can play along. It's just for fun. And it always, always just gets me thinking outside the box. A lot of times too, sometimes the inspiration photo that was chosen um, will get me thinking too, just depending on all the different things. There's also all the other team members and then everyone that plays along. So even if um, you don't want to necessarily play along and like submit your your creation or whatever, it's so good to like scroll through and see what everyone else has made and like their interpretation of it. It's fun. So I did some ink blending. I did a little bit of mixed media, pulled out a couple different pastes, one of my oxide sprays, all sorts of fun things. So as always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video as well. All of my links are affiliate links. All that means is that if you use one of my links and place an order, I get a small kickback at no extra cost to you. And that, you know, adds up over the month and is what helps pay the bills and keep the channel running and all the things. And then, yeah, keep watching and I'll show you guys how I made this card. So the first thing I worked on was my background. And this is where I did a little bit of just experimenting. I was just having fun. So I started with the Simon Says Stamp, um, not quite a dot cling stamp. I've shown this in a few, couple recent videos so far. I like this, this background. I think you guys will be seeing me use it quite frequently. It's just, it's just a nice one to add texture, you know? So I inked the stamp up with Salvage Patina Distress Ink. And I'm working on um, some Distress Heavy Stock. I had a feeling I was going to get a little inky with it, so why not? And I put it in my splat box, and then I sprayed it a bit with some salvage patina distress oxide spray. And then I was like, hmm, I wonder what will happen if I spray it with some water, kind of sop that up with a tissue. Like, like I said, I was just playing. I was like, let's just see what happens. <laughs> so I did that, added a bit of water, and I really like how it just, like by using a tissue, like to sop it up, how, you know, I got that very light splattery effect it's just, and you can still see like all of that, the stamp that I stamped like through all of that. So it was just interesting. So I let all of that dry and then I went in with a stencil. So I'm just working on the um, Altenew Ultra Sticky Grid um, grid Mat. So I used that just to hold that um, heavy stock in place because it was quite warped from, you know, all the water spraying and everything. And then um, just the other day in a recent order, I, I picked up a container of this Altenew embossing paste. I was just curious. The texture of it's different. It's very, very whipped. You know, it, it's just, it's very light. And I was like, oh, okay. So I applied that over. This stencil is the lattice tile stencil from Simon's Stamp. So I applied just a little bit of it. And then I went in with another paste. This is uh, the Lunar Paste in Gold Rush. I was, I saw a little reel by Joe Sasavath on Instagram the other day and he used like a white paste and then like gold embossed paste at the same time. And I was like, oh, love that. If I remember, I will link to his Instagram in the description box below the video. He makes beautiful cards, like oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He's so creative. I love it. So highly recommend um, following his um, Instagram. So I set that background aside to dry. And then I die cut some Simon's uh, Smooth White cardstock using the etched layered daisy stem wafer dies. And I stuck the stems onto my uh, grip mat. And I'm going to layer inks on these. I, I just, I had some fun with it. So I needed to create sort of like an olive green color, you know, for the color throwdown challenge. So I started out with crushed olive distress ink. And then I'm going in with some peeled paint. And then I'm going to go in with some Rustic Wilderness. And I'm working, uh, right now I'm just using one of my Waffle Flower uh, One Plus shader brush to do all of this inking. And 
these three greens together just oh nice so nice you can't go wrong with any distressings really and the greens especially are just they're so fun to layer really i need to do this more often it's just it's fun you know letting things kind of do their own thing so now i'm going in with the rustic wilderness which chef's kiss this is just everyone needs this green in my opinion honestly so i went in with that and then i went back with that crushed olive and just kind of added a bit more to um, all of these stems and then this is where i saw i was like these need splatter you know like of course so i took the peeled paint and just smushed it onto my work surface put the whole sticky mat like right into my <laughs> my splat box so i don't get splatter absolutely everywhere and then i'm just using just a little tiny brush it's just a little size two brush and I added some water, swirled that around in the ink on my work surface and then just splattered this all over those stems. So it'll just give them, you know, some texture, some splattery, splotchy bits. And then I pulled these off, set them aside so the splatter can dry, which is only going to take a few minutes. And then with these grip mats, whether it's the Altini one, the Waffle Flower one, the Pick Fence ones, etc., you clean them just like you clean your stamps. So you can just wipe them with a baby wipe, clean them with water. Um, I do not recommend using any form of alcohol on them. You just want to use like your stamp cleaner. You can use a gentle dish soap. I'm just mentioning that because I get asked a lot about how you clean them. You just clean them like you clean your stamps. These will stain. These grip mats will stain. That is what high quality photopolymer does. Certain colors, just especially those reds, like to like seep in and they'll, they'll stain it. But it doesn't affect the usability of it all. This one eventually will get I've already know it's got a little like in real life it's got like the lightest pink tinge to it because it's getting stained I'm okay with that anyway for the the florals themselves I started with salvage patina and now I'm going in with peacock feathers using that same uh, size uh, one plus little shader brush so I did that on all of these um, die cuts and then I'm going to go in with a smaller brush the, the zero plus the little, little tiny baby blending brushes from waffle flower and I'm adding uncharted mariner right to the very base of each of these petals and this is where it just all came together because I, I needed that like kind of deeper teal color you know for the for this challenge and um, peacock feathers while it's such a gorgeous color and so salvage patina but the uncharted mariner just you know brought it brought it home so I went in with that. I was originally, um, I was trying to be really careful on these top pieces because these are the ones that layer like on, you know, are, are the, the front facing pieces of these, these wafer dies. And I was trying to avoid like getting ink, you know, on the centers because I was going to ink blend the centers. And then I was just like, nope, it's faster to just color the centers with a marker. <laughs> so you could totally though, like, especially with these little brushes, it would have worked, but just the marker was faster but I was I had vintage photo and wall, you know walnut stain distressings pulled out to do the blending but then markers won so I just used a couple Copic markers like quick and simple and the two I used are just kind of my two go-to brown shades which is E27 and E29 so I colored the the flower centers with the E27 and then I just use like I lift up the die cut and I'm just going along the edges to cover that sort of um, exposed white edge from the die cut it just taking those few extra seconds to do things like that it just kind of gives everything a more finished look so I did the E27 and then I decided to add a bit of E29 just to kind of deepen it a little bit on those flower centers give it a little bit more dimension went back with the E27 quickly blended it and then we're good to go so once I've got everything you know blended and colored these are also going into the splat box because I gotta add splatter to those too so that everything's matchy matchy <laughs> And for that, again, I used the, the peacock feathers, smushed that on my work surface, added a bit of water, working again with this little tiny, this little tiny brush so that I can add um, just these little bits of splatter to all of these petals. And again, you can always, you know, skip this sort of thing if you don't like it. I just really love how splatter adds, you know, just that texture and it's fun and it's easy. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it because that is part of it too. When I first started doing this, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like it goes everywhere. You learn to embrace it. You know, I got so like, you guys can see my splat box. You guys know it's got like 1500 layers of <laughs> splatter after all these years. And it's ice. And even with the splat box, I still have splatter all over the place. It's all over my work surface. It's all over me, my camera, all the things. I'm fine with it. Anyway, let all the things dry. And then assembling these is super, super simple. You just layer the two floral pieces together and then you attach them to the stems. 
easy. So I just use my craft tacky glue to adhere these. If you wanted to create even more dimension, you could just stick these together with a little like foam square, you know, to really pop them up. That would look really nice too. The only thing I would do if I was going to do that is the, the bottom layer, I would color the center because you'd be able to see it a bit, you know, from the side. So I would add like the marker to the center if I was you know, separating the layers with foam squares, but I just stick them together with glue. And then I stuck them to their, their respective stems, let all that dry. And then I needed to work on my sentiment. And my main like die cut sentiment, I pulled out another just oldie but goodie favorite that I've used a million times. This is the CZ Design uh, Basic Trio Wafer Dies. And because I'd used that Gold Rush paste on the background, um, it's kind of like a muted gold. It's not a bright gold. And I didn't have, like, I don't have any cardstock, like any type of gold cardstock that com like coordinates with this shade of gold. So I made my own and I just used that paste and my finger and I just blended it onto the scrap of the what same white cardstock I did with the die cuts. The thing to, that helps though, and this, it doesn't always need to be like this because I've used those lunar paste and die cut them, like applied it to cardstock and die cut them and never had a problem. But I know for a fact, because off camera, I actually messed it up and it like fused into the wafer die, um, that this wafer die really likes to cling to things. So if you've got a wafer die that, you know, is very delicate, you know, like you find your cardstock rips when you're trying to remove it. There's, you know, it's a very thin, delicate die or just a wafer die that likes to be stubborn. Put a piece of wax paper between your cardstock and your wafer die. So that's what I did here. I just put a little, like I went to my kitchen, grabbed a little, you know, cut out a little piece of wax paper, stuck it between the wafer die and the cardstock that I applied the lunar paste to. And that gives you a little buffer to get the, not only the die cut out of the uh, wafer die easier, but in this case, it also helped kind of protect the the cardstock with the, the paste, you know, so that it doesn't get, like I said, like fused into the wafer die. Um, and, and in that case with the one that it happened to that, Again, I didn't have it filmed, so I couldn't show you guys. Um, I just had to like scrape it out with my little dye pick. I scraped it out, brushed it with my little like toothbrush that I use to clean things in my office here. And it was, it was fine. It was fine. So wax paper for the win. So I did um, die cut more scraps of that white cardstock with the same wafer dye and stack those together to give it dimension. As Laura Basson says, dimension is life. Or while she sings it, I'm not going to. You guys don't need... You don't need that torture. <laughs> so much better when she does it. It's always in the back of my head. Every time I see, like, the word dimension, I immediately hear her singing in the back of my brain. It's like, dimension is life. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. Anyway, anyway, for my little companion sentiment, I'm using the newer, um, this is the Airy Greetings stamp set. There's just a lot of good basic, you know, greetings in there. And I had a piece of cardstock in my little scrap box. I'm pretty sure this is Concord 9th Peacock cardstock that was just perfect, you know, to go with these colors. So I had it in my Misty. I used my anti-static powder tool. I stamped the sentiment with clear embossing ink. And then for this, I used Simon's Antique Gold embossing powder, which again, I don't use this one very often. It's gorgeous. I don't reach for it very often. However, it goes really well with that embossing paste. So, you know, I was going matchy-matchy. Things were working. So I heat embossed it. I removed the excess anti-static powder with my microfiber cloth. And by now my, like my background's fully dry, etc. So I trimmed the background down to about three and three quarters by five inches. And then this sentiment strip, I trimmed it down um, also with my guillotine trimmer here so that it's the same width as the cardstock. So it's also like three and three quarter inches. And then um, now I'm gonna start assembling things. So I already had my, you know, cluster of florals sort of figured out. So I laid them out how I want them to be on the card. I'm going to flip these over and I'm just going to put foam squares on the backs of the flowers, like right behind the, the centers there. And I use like a thicker one for the, the floral that's going to be in the front and then thinner foam squares for the other two. And then I use a piece of washi tape just to hold them together. So I could add a bit of adhesive to adhere the stems together. And then I'll remove that little washi tape, add more um, adhesive to like the stems and the leaves. And then I can pop this onto the card front. So the stems and the leaves will be, you know, adhered to the card front. And then the actual florals are going to be popped up that little bit with those foam squares. So that alone, that's also why I didn't use the foam squares. Like 
I was saying earlier to adhere the the two layers of the florals together because I use the foam squares now. So I then also pulled out Baker's twine because I happen to have some in a color that worked for this <laughs> for this project. Uh, so I put some Baker's twine, wrapped that around the card front there, and then reverse tweezers for the win as always because you start your knot the reverse tweezers can hold that in place and then I can kind of fiddle with the bow get it the way I want it once I was happy with it I can trim off the excess with um, my scissors fiddle with it a little bit more to get it the way I want it and then um, I'm going to adhere that sentiment strip right underneath um, the baker's twine so get that out of the way adhere that with the craft tacky glue right below the baker's twine and then same thing with the die cut sentiment i'm going to adhere that kind of right above and on top of the baker's twine so get that adhered into place and then for my card base my card base is a top folding a2 white note card i'm going to use that not quite a dot background again and ink it up with that same salvage patina distress ink i had put post-it tape right where the score line was just so i don't get anything stamped past the score line and then I had that last die cut because I die cut four of these daisies and I only put three on the card front and then this fourth one's going to go on the inside of the card. I thought about stamping another sentiment from that airy greetings set as well, which would look cute, but I decided not to just to leave it. I think the, the little daisy and this little background on the inside is just works. So I'd hear that into place, let the glue dry, flipped it over, trimmed off the parts that were hanging off with my scissors. And then to adhere my card front to the card base, I'm just using my Big Mama foam tape. That'll, you know, again, pop it up a little bit and also make it adhere nicely because you've got those, um, the baker's twine, you know, wrapped around it. That's also why I avoid putting foam tape on or around, the like on the baker's twine. I put it around it so that everything just lays flat. So I get that adhered into place. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, I have these um, Trinity stamps high dive baubles these look like they're glowing they came out with several new colors and i've just been like petting them <laughs> literally i'm not even kidding i pull them out and i'm just like these are they're they're like my precious they're just they're shiny you guys know i'm a magpie i like the shiny sparkly things and these just they legit look like they're glowing i love it anyway adhere those into place with dabs of craft tacky glue and that finished off this card so yeah, I got some mixed media and texture and splatter and bling and all the fun things going on. And like I said in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. I'll link to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have a link to the color throwdown challenge. I'll have my supply list with links to all the things I used also in the description box below. So you just need to expand that and all the info will be there for anyone who is interested. As always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I would love to have you. And I'll have a link to the playlist using this Etched Daisies wafer die set here at the end. You guys can check it out if you'd like, and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.